In this video, we're going to take a look at the audio low pass filter, which is a pro only feature. And it's also the only filter that I'm going to look at in its own separate video. It gets special treatment because it's actually a really important filter for getting your sounds to sound just right in a variety of different environments. And what I mean is, in the real world, if you've got, say, a boombox like, like this playing some sort of music, and you put it in the next room and you close the door, you expect to hear the sound start to sound dampened, like, you know, the, like that door is conflicting with the audio reaching to your ears. Uh, you know, if you, you've ever stepped, like, outside of a, a club or a restaurant where there's some sort of music playing, and you can hear the music while you're walking around on the street... But then as you go, you know, it's kind of muted and kind of nasty sounding. And then as you step inside, it becomes a lot clearer. That's exactly the effect you can create with a low-pass filter. Also, if you have a room that is uh, very, uh, s you know, smoky or an area that has a, a thick, heavy fog in it, it's a good idea to apply a low-pass filter because sound is going to propagate through a cluttered environment like that very differently than it will in pure open air. So just some, some food for thought in that regard. Now, if you want to do fancy stuff like that, like if you have you want your low pass filter to really kick up and get more intense when you open a door or when you close a door, basically when you put something between you and the audio source, that sort of thing requires scripting. However, without any scripting whatsoever, we can control the distance at which this low pass filter affects our sound using our roll off graph that you actually see inside the inspector right now. And it's the only one of the filters that is going to appear in the graph like that, which is w another reason why it's getting a little bit of special treatment in this video. So without any further ado, let's take a look at what we've got. Now, we've got the same setup that we've had in previous videos in the little audio section here, where I've got my little model boombox. It's just I've swapped out my sound for, instead of using a beep, we're actually using a recording of Chopin's Nocturne Number no. 9. I picked this up at museopen.com. Yeah, you're welcome to go grab it yourself if you like. It's... It's completely free, it's open source, but the cool thing about it is using something with a pretty good amount of fidelity, like a piano recording, will make it really obvious what the low-pass filter is doing for us. So if I was to give us just a quick demonstration of this... So there we go. It's just some nice piano music that we can use for a demo. Now I do want to throw this out. For the sake of this example, I have turned off the Doppler level. I've set it all the way to zero. And that is because our first person controller was causing a little bit of a jitter in that Doppler effect, making the audio sound like it was chirping and doing all sorts of weird stuff, which has nothing to do with the audio system. Uh, the audio system for Doppler works great. It's just that the first person controller actually has a tiny amount of jitter. It's imperceptible when you're playing, or nearly imperceptible when you're playing, but it does come through with Doppler effects on audio. I just wanted to point that out, and it's just an aspect of the default first person controller that comes along with Unity, just so you're completely aware. Okay, so now let's get the low pass filter applied to our audio source. So we'll go to component, jump down to audio, and it's the first one on the list, audio low pass filter. And as soon as we apply this, notice we now get low pass as a magenta curve that appears in our listener. And if we scroll all the way down, we have our low pass filter component. Now, the, it only has two properties. The first being cutoff frequency. This has a range of 10 hertz all the way up to 22,000 hertz. And you'll notice as I change those numbers, our curve actually goes from its, ex uh, its highest extent to its lowest extent. So at 10, it's all the way up. And at 22K, it's all the way down. And if you go about midway with something like uh, 11K, it'll be about halfway. So all what that's doing, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of a low-pass filter, what this does is this removes all frequencies above its current setting. So right now at 11K, it's going to remove all frequencies that are higher than 11K, which is why... Uh, when, if you wanted to use this, like, say, to simulate the effects of muting a sound in the real world, that's similar to the effect you get in the real world, such as when you have a, an audio source like a music box or a boom box that you put into a room and close the door. The higher end frequencies become kind of muted. They're absorbed by the door that's in front of you, while the lower frequency sounds can penetrate and actually still make it to your ears. So that's how we're able to simulate this effect. Now, our next property is low pass resonance cue, which is actually low-pass resonance quality factor. 
this is going to affect the internal self resonance of the filter. The filter itself has a waveform inside of it. Uh, it's kind of like a sine wave that's controlling how it's cutting off. And as you, uh, basically this, this setting allows you to control how much that curve is dampened. So if you use a, a higher value, the energy rate of that curve is going to drop off a bit more slowly. Gen it really, it goes uh, from 1 to 10, and it's the kind of thing where you're probably just going to be playing with it to, to get the setting that you think sounds right. Uh, in most cases, I find that I don't have to mess with it too much. Just sort of throw that out. Okay, so let's take a look at dropping in some settings for this. I'll start off by leaving this all the way at 22K for a moment. And I'm going to hit play and get us squared up right in front of the boom box. Now, I'm close enough that we're getting maximum volume. And I'm going to rotate myself around, and as soon as I'm facing it, I'll click in the inspector so that we'll stop moving. And because I'm talking, I'm going to pull back the volume just a bit. So you should still be able to hear me, and you should still be able to hear the music. Now, if I come down to our cutoff frequency, and I pull this all the way down to 10, we completely lose the music. There's really nothing coming back to us lower than a frequency of 10, so let's try 1,000. And you can hear it sounds really kind of muted. The high-pitched tones of those keys are not coming through anymore. And maybe if we put it to 200, it'll get even better. And now you got to listen pretty closely. Let me turn the volume back up. You can just barely make out the low-level sounds. This would be if you had a really heavily padded room or something with some thick insulation that was blocking your sounds. And as I increase this, more and more of the sound is going to be able to come in. So at 600, you can still tell it's being muted by something. There is something muffling that piano. It's nowhere near as clear as it was at 22K but we can still hear it. So this would be a nice thing to use, you know, just outside the doors, maybe, you know, if you had some pretty heavy doors. So now if we push this back up to 22K, if, just to let you hear the difference, I'll leave it set to 600 for a few seconds, then I'll click it up to 22K again so you can really hear that shift. And now you're getting that full quality audio. So that's a quick look at what this does. Now let's take a look at how we can map that over distance. As I mentioned earlier, the low pass filter is unique in that we can control its mapping over distance. So let's do that. Now if you try to change this first keyframe, you're not going to get anywhere. You really need to add a second keyframe. And to make this easier on the system to process, I'm going to move my curve to about halfway along by setting it to about 11,000. Then if I double click anywhere on the magenta curve, I get a second keyframe. Now, dragging this all the way down basically equates to having no filtration. So it's, we have full fidelity, which seems like it would make sense at the source itself. So we'll put this at about one meter. And then just for sake of example, we're going to set our at about ooh, 20 meters. Yeah, we go about 25 meters. And you can see the little numbers there on my keyframe as I drag around. The first number is how far away we are, and the second number is a 0 to 1 value. Now realize that 0 to 1 value is mapping a range from 10 all the way to 22,000. So if we want something around 5 to 600, we probably want to be aiming for somewhere right about here, give or take. And I'm probably wildly off. You can just think of this as a magnitude for how much is being cut off. Now, I don't want the volume to be much affected while we're moving away. Uh, I, I, want, I want you to really only be hearing that low pass filter kick in, and I don't want volume to be a factor. So I'm actually going to take the volume drop off and pull it back here. So the volume drop off will not start until we've already reached the max of our low pass filter. So does that make sense? We're going to stay at our full volume all the way for about the first, oh, let's say, 30 meters as we start to back away, and then volume will drop off. Our low-pass filter will be essentially off when we're right up on top of the sound effect, and then it'll be really cutting away all of those high-end frequencies by the time we hit about 20 meters or so. There we go. So let's give this a quick try. So here we are at full fidelity.
And now as I back away, it's going to start to sound like it's getting quieter. And now it's already getting muted. However, if that's not driving the point home enough, let's push this even higher. Let's get up to about 9.7 and try it one more time. So once again, full. And as we back away... And that sounds really seriously muted. Like we're hearing this from the next room. And that's really all there is to it. Now again, you can do all kinds of fancy things with this through script. You can have your uh, your low pass cutoff frequency change based on all kinds of events, based on whether you step into this room, open that door, have something slammed down in front of the player. All kinds of different tricks and, and things you can use. But because we're not exploring script here, all I can really do is just show you the basics of how this works and get you familiar with what a low pass filter is going to offer you in terms of your overall audio. But that is going to wrap things up for this video, so thank you very much for watching.